Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. And today we're starting a brand new message series entitled Stealing the Seed. Jesus spoke much about sowing and planting, reaping and harvesting. He told many parables about seeds and how the enemy targets the seed. So why is the seed so targeted? Three reasons. The seed is targeted because the increase is in the seed, the food is in the seed, and the identity is in the seed. And that's why the enemy is after our seed. Today's message is entitled, The Increase is in the Seed. And we're going to read two portions of scripture. First, we're going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 through 11. And then we will continue right on with Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10. So beginning with 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 and 11. It reads, He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 10. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Paul is confirming the promise of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 10, where God himself has made that promise. This is a very great, a very significant promise from our God. And Paul applied it to the Corinthian church. Therefore, it can also be applied to us. Or we can also claim that promise. But only if we meet the requirements. You need to understand that God's promises are not for any and everyone, but only for those who meet the requirements to claim that promise or to receive the promise. The promise said that it is God who supplies seed for the sower and bread for the eater and gives the multiplication of the seed and the increase of the harvest. This can also be applied spiritually. Look with me at 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 5 and 6. What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believe, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. The King James Version says, but God gave the increase. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about spiritual or material multiplication. It is God who gives the increase. The word multiplication here means to be abundant with a sense of being self-replenished. So as long as the sower is sowing, the seed is replenishing and multiplying and the harvest is also increasing. Now the word increase is a Greek word meaning to grow to the extreme limit. It also means to attain very great power or authority. So then, it is God who gives the multiplication of the seed and the increase of the harvest. But it is you who must protect and guard your seed. Make no mistake, your seed is being threatened. But not only that, I want you to listen to this. If you eat your seed, you will never have an increase. You will never have a harvest. You must sow your seed in order to reap a harvest. You will never attain great authority or great power without putting seed into the ground. 
The bread, however, is for the eater. The seed is for sowing. It is only the sower who harvests, and all harvesters must sow. It is a universal principle of sowing and reaping. You cannot reap what you do not sow. And if you will not sow, you will not reap. And here is the good part though. You don't even have to know exactly what it is that you're doing in order for this universal law to work for you. We have a very faithful follower on our channel. They emailed us about donating to our ministry because it has been such a blessing to them. Now, whether or not they realize it, whenever you sow into a ministry, you reap or you harvest with that ministry. In other words, you get to share in the blessing of that ministry. Thus, you're storing up for yourself treasures in eternity. But let me make a real quick disclaimer here. We didn't receive a donation because we're not set up to receive donations. We could be set up, but we have elected not to. So there was no way to donate, at least not at this point in time. Anyway, I want us to take a look at what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 41. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. Whenever you partner with the spiritual, you receive with the spiritual and you share in their blessings as well as in their reward. But the point is, you don't even have to know what it is that you're doing for the law of sowing and reaping to increase or be a profit to you. Because it is God who gives the growth. It is God who gives the increase. But only after you sow. So again, God gives the increase, but we must sow. God gives the growth but it is our job to protect our seed. We, it's our job to protect our increase. It's our job to protect our harvest. Look at the rest of that verse in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one and each will receive his wages according to his labor. The increase might be physically here on earth, but our wages are spiritually sent on ahead of us into eternity. Please understand that what we do here will result in eternal treasures sent on ahead of us. That is the reason why Jesus advised us Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. What we do for Jesus here on earth is like seed that we sow into fertile ground and it will bear an eternal reward in the form of that eternal treasure that Jesus spoke about in the verse that we just read. You also need to realize that you can sow good seed as well as bad seed and that good seed will produce good fruit and obviously the bad seed will produce bad fruit. Turn with me please to Hosea chapter 10 verse 12 and 13. It says, sow for yourselves righteousness, reap steadfast love, break up your fallow ground, for it is the time to seek the Lord, that he may come and rain righteousness upon you. You have plowed iniquity. You have reaped injustice. You have eaten the fruit of lies because you have trusted in your own way and in the multitude of your warriors. So there you have it. You can only reap 
what you have sown, nothing else. So the enemy comes along and he tries to destroy the good seed because he knows that the increase is in the seed. The seed of the nations have been stolen by the rich and the powerful because the wealth of the nation is still being stolen by the Federal Reserve System. Here's how the increase of the seed is stolen. And I can tell you in just one word, inflation. It doesn't matter how they define it. Inflation is nothing more than the transfer of wealth. It keeps devaluing the fiat money, sending prices higher and higher, which is then blamed on greedy corporations and greedy business owners when it is not them at all, but this tyrannical financial system that we are subjected to. Inflation forces the wage earner to continuously spend their hard-earned money. Why? Because the fiat money printed today steadily decreases in value over a period of time as prices steadily increase over that same period of time because of inflation. And thus it steals the value of your savings. So to keep up with the rapidly decreasing value of your fiat currency, you must spend your money as soon as you make your money, or it will be worth less and less and less, which means purchasing less and less and less. And the more fiat money that is printed, the more it is devalued, forcing prices higher and higher, taking away the purchasing power of the consumer. I want to define fiat money for you. Fiat money is fake money printed by the Federal Reserve System, backed by nothing more than debt, and is then loaned to the government to be issued as currency. But obviously, never forget, it's all in our best interests. It's all for our good. And the thing about it is that consumers does not even realize why his or her money is no longer sufficient to buy groceries. It's no longer sufficient to pay the rent. It's no longer sufficient for anything but the very bare necessities. And the sad part is they believe the lie that says it's the greedy corporations that are jacking up the prices. But I wanna ask you, who is it that owns the majority of these greedy corporations in the first place that is jacking up the prices? Think about it. Henry Ford said this about our financial system, and I wanna quote him, quote, it is well enough that people of the nation do not understand our banking and monetary system. For if they did, I believe there would be a revolution before tomorrow morning." End of quote. We have no clue what is going on. Ask the average voter or the average tax-paying citizen who owns the Federal Reserve System. The answer is the government. They have no idea that it is a for-profit private bank. Although many people are now waking up and smelling the coffee and sensing the approaching disaster, the majority are still clueless. People do not see because they refuse to see. They do not want to see. Instead, they have us bickering and fighting amongst ourselves because united we stand, divided we fall. Keep them divided, keep them conquered. But always remember, the things that they do are all for our best interests. I want to read you a quote from the Federal Reserve's own website. Quote, the Federal Reserve System is the central bank of the United States. Who elected them? I don't know. 
It performs five general functions to promote the effective operation of the US economy and more generally, the public interests. The Federal Reserve, one, conducts the nation's monetary policy to promote maximum employment, stable prices, and moderate long-term interest rates in the US economy. Remember, this is a private bank for profit. Two, promotes the stability of the financial system and seeks to minimize and contain systematic risks through active monitoring and engagement in the US and abroad. Promote the safety and soundness of individual financial institutions and monitors their impact on financial system as a whole. Number four, fosters payment and settlement system safety, safety for who, and efficiency through services to the banking industry and the US government that facilitate US dollar transactions and payment. And number five, promotes consumer protection and community development through customer focused supervision and examination, research and analysis of emerging customer issues and trends, community economic development activities, and the administration of consumer laws and regulations. Community development. Have you seen videos of those big cities like Philadelphia, Chicago, New York, San Francisco? Well, that is before the Chinese president, Xi Jinping's visit. Or have they seen the videos of Portland, Oregon? A city that once was deemed as the nation's most beautiful cities. Church attendance was high there. It was a family centered. They claimed to have a good place to bring up children. It's now in drastic decline because of lax crime laws, availability of drugs, and cheapness of those drugs, like fentanyl, can be purchased for a dollar, along with chronic homelessness, etc., etc. You know, every city that I mentioned above has a Federal Reserve Bank in it, yet those cities are in chaos. The seed has been stolen from the people. That is the reality. Their increase has decreased. When you can make more money from welfare than from a minimum wage job, your seed is being stolen. When you go through 12 years of education and graduate barely able to read and write, your seed has been stolen. When federal income tax takes 25% or more of your hard earned paycheck, your seed is being stolen. When billions of dollars of your own tax dollars are being set to fight wars that you have nothing to do with, or to fund organizations that are plotted against you, or to fund countries to pay back their mismanaged debts while your own country lies in ruin, your seed is being stolen. When you never get to own your own homestead because every year you get to pay your lease in the form of property tax, your seed is being stolen. And when you try to sell your home after paying property taxes for all of those years, then you get to pay what they call capital gains tax, property tax, and real estate transfer tax. Your seed is being stolen. Am I against paying taxes? No, not at all. But overburdened taxes, I am. Joseph, acting on behalf of Pharaoh, only asked for 5% and he fed the whole known world. God, in his providence, only asked for 10%. I'm just wondering, just wondering, why is our 
income being taxed, making it harder and harder for folks to survive. That's all I'm asking. Here's something else that bothers me. Why would your government take their own citizens' social security retirement income away from them if they get another job to try to supplement their meager existence because they make it a little too much money? Your seed is being stolen. Maybe that is the reason why it's thrown out there that the retirement age should be raised because people are living longer. Lord forbid that they should retire and enjoy a little bit of their fruit of their labors. That proposal should be called work up to death bill because your seed is being stolen. Here's what God thinks about that. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse 11 through 13. I perceive that there's nothing better for them than to be joyful and to do good as long as they live. Also that anyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in all his toil. This is God's gift to man. Who are that them? It is the worker at his toil from verse 9. It is God's gift to men and women that he or she should be joyful and eat and drink and take pleasure in all of their toil. It is God's gift to you and to me and to our children and their children and their children. But our seed is being stolen. And this is not the only time that Solomon mentions that either. Look with me at Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 24 and 25. There is nothing better for a person than that he should eat and drink and find enjoyment in his toil. This also, I saw, is from the hand of God. For apart from him, who can eat or who can have enjoyment? There is nothing better Solomon says that for a person that he or she be given the opportunity to enjoy the fruits of their own labor. Not take the fruits from someone else's labor and give it to the one who refuses to labor. That, my friends, are not God's ways. It is a God-given privilege for every laborer to find enjoyment in his or her own toil. Jesus was under the same impression also. For when he sent out the 72, he told them, remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the laborer deserves his wage. Do not go from house to house. The laborer deserves his wages. It is not right to take his wages so that he cannot afford to enjoy the fruits of his labor. This is called stealing the seed. I would like to take a look at one last scripture. I want us to read what Paul in, how Paul interprets Deuteronomy chapter 25 verse 4. So turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 18. This is Paul's interpretation of Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 4. It reads, For the scripture says, You shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the green, and the laborer deserves his wages. Paul, explaining to Timothy, said that the elders who ruled, who, who ruled well must be considered worthy. And those who labor in preaching and teaching are worthy of double honor. He was so convinced of this Mosaic law that he wrote the same thing to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 9. And then he asked the Corinthians two rhetorical questions. He asked, is it for oxen that God is concerned? Does he not certainly speak for our sake? Then he goes on to answer his own questions. He says, yes, the law was written for who? Our sake, 
Then he explains why. He said, because the plowman should plow in hope and the thresher thresh in hope of sharing in the crop. Isn't that incredible? God is not only concerned with mankind, but even with animals. So in, in certainty, if God is that concerned with animals, then he writes a law to protect them or to ensure that they are able to partake in the fruit of their labor, how much more is he concerned with those who labor diligently and then have their seeds stolen? I believe God is very concerned and he's not very happy at all. He created laws to prevent that sort of thing. That is why it is written, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest. But your seed is being stolen. Now listen to this. If someone will not work, there can be no increase because God can only increase the seed of the sower. He can only multiply the harvest of the reaper. And that is why Paul wrote to the Thessalonian church and warned them against laziness. He warned them against lack of ambition. He said, if anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. It is all about sowing and reaping laboring and enjoying the proceeds thereof because the increase is in the seed. Therefore, we are to protect our seed. I want you to listen to this. A McDonald's hamburger cost just 15 cents in 1948. And when they launched the Big Mac sandwich in 1968, it cost just 45 cents. Today, a Big Mac ranges anywhere from $4.19 to $7.09, depending on which state you buy that Big Mac in. That, my friend, is called inflation, and it is a seed eater, which means your seed is being stolen. Anytime there is a decrease and not an increase, your seed is being stolen because the increase is in the seed. Let me tell you one more seed eater. It is the power of suggestion. When commercials, advertisements, all done by movie stars and music stars, rock music, country music, hip hop, etc., whatever else you have, or the plain old rich and famous. Where they suggest to you that your life is not worth living unless you own the latest Nike tennis shoe, or if you're not wearing the latest name brand clothes, you're nothing. It, is, it pressures some people to spend their last dollar to buy said product. Even if they can't afford that product, they buy it anyway because of the pressure. They will live in a broken down rented apartment but wearing a $200 Nike shoe. Or they will be living in the basement of their parents' home or on the top of a garage but wearing costly name brand clothes and sporting the latest $1,500 iPhone. That is called seed eaters and your seed is being stolen. So let me ask you, what is eating your seed? Have you taken account of what is eating your seed? Do not let anything or anyone steal your spiritual seed because it's all about eternity nothing here matters it's only eternity that matters you will have to spend eternity in one place 
or the other place. Either a place of perfectness, a place of perfect peace, of joy, where all things that you will ever need or will ever want is supplied for you. Or in the other place where there's eternal torment, where there are, are eternal flames that are never quenched, where the warm dieth not, where there's total and complete darkness, where there is no rest night or day. Those are your only two options. And let me tell you, Jesus is coming back real soon. You need to decide where you're going to spend your eternity. You need to decide whether or not it'll be with Jesus in blissfulness or in the lake of fire in total torment. When Jesus comes back, he can only give you the harvest from the seed that you have sown. So tell me, are you sowing good seed? Seed that will produce good fruit, eternal fruit. Or are you sowing the other kind of seeds? Let me ask you another thing. Are you ready for Jesus' return? If you're not ready, but you would like to be ready, here's how to get ready. It all starts with repentance. So if you're ready to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior and be ready for His return, be ready for that eternal harvest, repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Help me to live for you. Help me, Lord, to take my eyes off of the temporal and put it on the eternal. Help me to sow good seed into fertile ground. Help me to live for you that when you come back, I will be one of those that you come back for. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Heavenly Father. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins, cleanse you from all your unrighteousness. He wants to bless you he wants to love you because he does love you. Otherwise, he would never have died for you. But he died for you because he loved you with an unfailing love. What I want you to do for those who have prayed that prayer, who just prayed that prayer, I want you to get a Bible. Read your Bible every single day. Get a highlighter. Highlight those verses that are meaningful, those verses that are helpful, those verses that you can use in your time of being down or when you're being tempted like Jesus did. Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written. Then I want you to join a Bible-believing church, not one of those progressive churches, but a Bible-believing church who still believes in holiness, who believes in righteousness, who believes that there is a right way to live, does not embrace the things of this world, but is looking for our soon coming king, a righteous king. Join that church. Be discipled in that church. When Jesus comes back, he'll find you doing what it is you should be doing. He'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Now enter in to the joy of your Lord. Well, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you so much. Jesus loves you. We love you. I'm Kenny Yates. Be blessed and stay blessed.